Meeting protocols. And so we're going to do a little skit for you guys. Uh, ready? I guess, yeah. All right. So where's our uh, people that people that felt like coming to a meeting today? In your sobriety. <laughs> My name is Missy and I'm codependent. Girl, I love you, sure. And addict. Oh, thank you, I know I like to tell you everything. All right, um, it's just my turn to talk, so be quiet now. Okay, um, so we need to open this moment, this meeting with a moment of silence. And the and the serenity prayer. Prayer. God. 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 Serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Me, the courage to change the things I can. You, and the wisdom to know the difference. That was awesome. I love Terry Lee. You love Terry Lee? That's great. I know. Okay. Oh, okay, so we're going to have some readings. Um, can somebody do who is an addict? Yeah. Hey, it's hot. I'm Jeff. I'm an addict. Hey, Jeff. Hey. Who is an addict? I knew. Most of I, us told me to get numbers. do Can not have to do yeah. things twice cool. about this. Okay. I'll share my experience with you. I will. <laughs> I, I can't read it. Okay. <laughs> I forgot my glasses. Okay. Well, um, can we get somebody to read the preamble? A preamble. Wait, 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 wait. How about the let's just, let's not even read any more readings. We hear those readings in every freaking meeting we go to. Let's just go ahead and start. Let's just go ahead and dispense those readings and just get on with our business. All right. Lauren, you could go out. Yeah, I'm going to get his number and then we can all go to his number. So does anybody, anybody have a problem or a topic or is anything threatening your sobriety? I have a burning desire. Uh, click, go ahead. Where are we going to eat after the meeting? <laughs> no, that is what, we can order pizza. <laughs> can, we, can we get the pizza with the seven tradition? Yeah, we can use the basket. We'll pass the basket and everybody can pass the chance and get the pizza. All right, cool. yeah, let's do if somebody orders it now, we'll have it by the time the meeting's over. All right, let me get on right. Somebody's got a burning desire. <laughs> Yeah, man, what's going on? My cat died. Well, who are you? Um, I'm an ad. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, the other day my cat come in the house and, and uh, it just hurt my feelings, boy, I tell you. I didn't know how to act. He went in there and, uh. My dog died. Yeah? Yeah. Recently? Uh, but anyway, he went in there and uh, he crapped all in the living room floor. And uh, y'all hold on a minute. <laughs> 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 Does, does anybody else want to share? How about Damn you, cat? How about you, man? You want to share? What? You want to share? Yeah, he's all good. <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> this meeting's going real good. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta take this call. <laughs> you guys go ahead. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, you know, at this point, everybody's um, doing really good. And since nobody wants oh, sorry, to stress, and since nobody really has much going on, I think we should close the meeting early. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we can eat. eat. We can eat. Yeah. yeah. I need to get a picture to post so everybody oh, yeah. knows. Yeah, yeah let's, we can do a group picture. Let's do it. Let's go. Thanks to everybody that was willing to participate. That was a lot of fun. And the Oscar goes too. <laughs> All right, young lady, you're up now. Uh, oh, I forgot. I, was, I, I got so carried away, I forgot I was still in the workshop. Um, I miss you, I'm at it. I got um, tickled when Jeremy called me earlier this week and we were talking about what to do. And like, I had all this stuff come to mind of, you know, uh, meeting protocol and, and what we do. And my own experience over the years, I mean, just like the traditions and most of the other stuff, I learned by doing it the wrong way. You know, that's how, you know, other people said, you can't do that, you know. Um, and that was pretty much the way I learned. I still learn. I'm still not a big, see, you put your hand on the, the stove, I still pretty much get burnt, and then somebody, you know, tries to help. So a lot of stuff um, in my process has been growth and change and, and learning by well, falling down. Um, one of my first experiences trying to get in recovery, um, I came by way of the other fellowship. And even when I got to our fellowship, there was sometimes a whole lot of um, discontent and people that wanted to be real rigid with our language and with stuff. And, and I'm guilty of um, hollering at people in a meeting. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud to say that, but there's, you know, yelling, not just, not just yelling, but yelling at and carrying on or stopping people from sharing, you know, because they weren't sharing the right way. Or they, you know, whatever was the, whatever I thought at the time was the appropriate protocol. And I've learned that with um, love and tolerance and acceptance and stuff, that there's a very fine line between what is appropriate and being a responsible member of our fellowship that, you know, it is my responsibility, even if I'm not the chairperson, to make sure that this message gets carried and that it's a clear message of Narcotics Anonymous. But that doesn't necessarily make me the N.A. Popo. I used to proudly have an N.A. Popo shirt that I wore, a tradition guardian, and I was like, whoo, you know, rocking it, you know, and felt like it was my place, and the reason I was put on earth was to make sure that you shared appropriately an N.A. message, and we carried the correct and perfect message of N.A., um, which led me to a bunch of drama, a bunch of strife, and a bunch of heartache, and, and probably irritated some people and ran them out of rooms. And that's not loving and caring, and that's not the way I want to portray myself or portray our fellowship. But I had to get burnt a time or two. Um, I'll share this. This, is, this was a personal experience. I got clean in St. Mary's in 1992, and it was a tiny little home group. There was probably about five or six of us, small. And I had been working with this woman who... Um, was doing volunteer work with me at DFAX and she partied and I knew she partied and occasionally she would ask me about my t-shirt or my key tags or whatever I was wearing and and she would see it and I had been you know and she would tell me about she'd come in you know you know the look she came in and I would you know and I'd be like well I used to you know I used to do that and I don't have hangovers anymore and I you know all this and I kept telling her about this special club I was in and you know if she ever wanted to join us she could come and check it out <clears throat> so after about a month of being attractive and talking to her, 
she she called and said, well, I'm coming Tuesday night. And I was like, wonderful, I can't wait to see you. So we get there Tuesday night, and there was our regular home group members, two of which were these extremely, uh, this angry female couple that were got loud. They were always loud, drama. They were like the Jerry Springer show <laughs> on a regular. <laughs> this particular night, oh, my God, they were sharing at each other. They were, they were... I'm, 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 I'm Betty and I'm an addict and I just hate it when some people don't take their responsibility seriously and they refuse to accept personal responsibility and they leave the toilet seat down and, uh, and don't put the cat and leave dishes and, and, so, and then the other one responded and that, that broke a loose into um, well you did and I did and your ex-husband did this and blah and money and who you, why didn't you pay so and so on time I mean it was a train wreck and it was almost a fist fight and there sits the lady that I've been trying to get to come to meetings, and I've been telling her what a wonderful spiritual thing we have going on, you know. And, and she's kind of reserved, and you know. And I'm like, I'm losing it. I'm like, oh my god, this is the worst meeting ever. I cannot believe. I mean, I'm about to throw up. I'm so agitated. And I'm like, oh my god, this is horrible. I can't believe this is our message of blah. And I want to kill the girls. And I'm like, oh, I'm losing it. And after the meeting, I was so mortified, and I was like, I am so sorry that this happened. If it, it's not always this way, if you would just please. You can give us another chance and come come to another meeting. And she went, this is the most fun I have ever had. When is the next meeting? You know? uh, and, I, and, my, and I went, okay, you know what? God really is in charge. Whatever happens is probably grand design, you know? Because she damn sure was coming to another meeting to see what we were doing next, you know? <laughs> So I've learned that there's a line, you know, and sometimes the reality of it is I'm not in charge, and God is. And as long as I move and continue to do the footwork and try to do my very best and just leave the results up to a power that's not me, things just fall into place, mm -hmm. typically. Um, that doesn't mean that I need to stand by the wayside and watch a train wreck go down, especially when our traditions are at stake, because, you know, somebody has to be vigilant. My friend Casey used to say, if somebody's going to swing a cat, it might as well be me, you know, which lead, you know, which means that I've put a target on myself lots of times because usually the person going, that's not the way we do it here, will invariably become the person. Like in, in my home group right now, we're having, um, we're having an issue where everybody wants to yell during the readings. And we have a sentence that says, please don't do that. And they want to take the sentence out. and they won't. So now what happens is anytime they violate whatever it is that they know they're not supposed to be doing, somebody wants to read out the Bible or somebody, you know, they're all like loving and caring and letting them do whatever. And then when it starts, they all look at me like, we'll do something. <laughs> She'll fix it. You know, I, I can't believe she's letting this happen. You know, or, oh, she's going to blow a fuse. Well, everybody in the room should be blowing a fuse. Somebody sitting next to them should go, we don't read that here. You know, anything. <clears throat> Some know the importance of protocol. I still struggle with finding a solution, and I think shortly here in a little bit we're going we're gonna to get you all to come up with some solutions, I hope. So, um, can I think? I think I'm out of stuff. I love you guys. I really thank y'all, everybody that came and helped this morning. That was awesome. Y'all are, are a talented bunch. Yeah, we, what we want to have y'all do next is that y'all all witnessed some of the problems that we see in here. And so we want to have y'all break into kind of small groups and wherever you're sitting at. We got some poster board. And we want y'all to kind of come up with what y'all think is like the worst problems of behavior in the meetings and stuff like that. And we'll spend 10 or 15 minutes letting y'all do that. There's about 20 people in here, so we figure if four groups of five people in a group or something like that, take the time, discuss it amongst yourself, have a scribe or whatever, and then write it down on these pieces of poster board. After that, we'll talk about what y'all came up with, and then we'll put y'all back in small groups again, and then we'll talk about what some of the solutions to some of these big problems that we see, especially if there's like all four boards boards have the same problem on it, you know, we can figure out maybe what the, some solutions are, and then we'll have Jeff talk at the end, and then we'll be, be done, so, uh, you can move the chairs around if you
Can I have your attention, please? Circle up! You can stay you can stay where you are. You stay where you are. We're gonna need a spokesperson from each group to kind of talk about what your group came up with. And we can go one at a time. Whoever wants to go first over here on this side right here, this group. <laughs> All right. Okay, what we did is we went, each of us gave us our, our top, top, top pet peeve. And then we discussed it further and added stuff to the list. So I wrote what was said. Women going back and forth to the coffee plot. <laughs> Consensus after the fact that you know everybody does, but you know we've got women going back and we're texting in meetings, back and forth to the bathroom, e-cigarettes, talking like side conversations, talking to the person next to you or behind you or in front of you or across the room, um, being on Facebook while you're in a meeting. Crosstalk, giving advice. Somebody shares, you're going to share after them and comment on what they said, give, you know, and try to tell them what they should do. Um, Oversharing. Uh, you know, people who go on and on and on, despite the fact that you asked that it's three to five minutes and part of sharing is sharing the time. Um, know it alls. People who have an answer for everything and want to let you know that they have an answer for everything. Um, people who share at every meeting just for the sake of sharing. Just, you know, there are those who really need to share and there are those who like to hear themselves speak. Um, sharing off topic consistently. You know, we discussed the fact that, you know, you're in a meeting, it's all, it has a topic. Uh, you might not share on the topic because you're going through something and you really need to share, but people who never share on the topic. And uh, <clears throat> 13th steppers. You know, there are male and female 13th steppers. And we've all seen them, met them, been one, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, seriously, I mean, you know, get honest. So, um, so those were our top, um, you know, like don't do in meetings. So that was it. All right, let's give his hand a couple of texting while somebody's sharing or or talking or their phone up we say put your phone on buzz or or cut them off one well they'll put them on buzz but then they'll go in there and they'll they'll grab that thing and and they'll go to find out who called them and hey side talk when someone's sharing you know that's the same thing as cross talking y'all had i don't like that Competitive sharing. <laughs> I think I got a little bit better sharing than you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Um, the cough, get coffee and go to the restroom before yep. the meeting. You got to pee. Go pee before the meeting. Yeah. Don't interrupt somebody trying to share. Why not? I mean, you know. Yeah, that's so Emphasizing cool. religion. Mm -hmm. Look, this is a non-religion yes. spiritual program. Yeah, yeah. I don't have nothing against religion, but keep your Bible verses from, from the inside mm -hmm. of the room. Hey. That's what I look at. Um, and the last one is how it used to be. <laughs> the old story. <laughs> I've been in here 45 years. Ooh. This is what we used what to do. Used to do. Well, you know, I've been here a year. <laughs> I need to know how to do it now, not 45 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's about what we got. All right, let's get it in.
from that. Um, likewise, a disruptive entry, so either someone that's coming in and out of the meeting a lot, someone that's coming in late and being loud about it. Um, obviously, the popular one, cell phone usage, um, using it during the meeting, or even just not paying attention to the please silence your phone note. Obviously, crosstalk. Um, Vivid using talk, or what they, my group called a drug log. Mm -hmm. If you want to get into the really nitty gritty details about the drug or about the using or whatever, that can be very distracting to some people um, or triggering. Um, pets. We had some issues with pets. You know, uh, some people bring in a little dog, but you know, Lauren had an example of people, two people who brought their pets at the same meeting and can get a little bit out of control. Um, <laughs> Sniper sharing. Some of my people like to explain that. <laughs> I actually got that from my buddy Rodney, but it's, it's people who target other people for their own petty reasons. Oh, like, yeah. is there a resentment there that they haven't worked oh, out? And they want to use the floor to get their stuff out and target mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. Totally, which is very similar. We also talk about passive aggressive calling out when somebody shares in the meeting and then somebody else goes, you know what I hate is when people don't pay attention and they basically call out the person that just shared. You know? Competitive um, sharing. So, um, talking, speaking your opinion instead of your experience, um, which can, you know, the preaching, the lecturing, and focusing on your own personal opinion rather than the experience of the benefit of the, uh, the people in the room. Um, adding words or color, we decided to call it, to the readings. Um, and um, putting non-essential things before the meeting proper is what we said. But that is like when things like passing the book, uh, the reading, pa uh, passing around a, a sheet for newcomers, when things like that become a higher priority than focusing on someone's share or a discussion leader or something like that. So making sure that the, the meeting message and the sharing is at the higher priority of making sure that you get this we were trying to just figure out how to, uh, you know, have a little meeting. Uh, some of them are kind of mixed together. The problems and meetings that we came up with was. Uh, the first two are coming mixed together. Coming in means late and sharing and then leaving. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, you know, not respecting the sharing limit, you know, uh, it'll say like two, that was something I said, you know, two to five minutes, but, you know, some places uh, try to apply, but, you know, there's always that one person that wants to share a long time. It's hard to say, let one person uh, cut off some uh, certain people and, you know, let other people share, you know, that you like you and share. So, anyway, it's just very, but anyway, um, so that's why I don't apply to anybody, but that's but something that comes down to a little bit further. Uh, not meeting phones and texting, uh, adding and subtracting uh, meeting format, uh, like somebody else shared, uh, mentioning specific drugs, uh, newcomer sharing about using that can happen with newcomer and or old time that can happen with me and a police um, sharing about specific religions, uh, uh, yes. sharing unapproved about unapproved literature, um, misguided, misquoting uh, the literature. So, uh, uh, um, groups, uh, groups uh, dependent on uh, discussion leaders or chairs. That was more, um, I don't know how to describe that, depending on somebody a backup, you know, uh, always having somebody, you know, they could call on, uh, you know, uh, a certain person has a key to everywhere. So, it, uh, 
you know, if you can't show up, we can always count on you or Missy or something to chair the meeting. So, um, social media, Facebook, scenario, and stuff like that. So, and then all the things we heard from all of you, you know, we're just saying we need to get to it. So, we're trying to figure out how to write it. All right. All right, we're going to hand these back out, but not to the group that made them. Mm -hmm. Each person will be given, each group will be given another piece of paper, and you'll come up with solutions to the problems, what you think will be the solutions to those problems on that paper. And you'll take another 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. We got group one going up here. All right. So we'll hold on. Pass. Hold the problem and I'll hold the solution. All right. Uh, coming in, leave is late. Change the stand. These, are some, the the these are some of the solutions we came up to, like sponsorship. Sponsorship and respecting the meeting. Is the solution we came up with coming in late today? Then sharing, you know, uh, if you come in late, then the sponsor should be able to talk to you about problems like that, you know. So that's what we came up to, and, and just basically respecting the fellowship, respecting your home, respecting your meeting, sharing and leading, set an example. I mean, if everybody came in late. And, and shared and then <laughs> left, how does that look to the newcomer? Doesn't look good, do it? I knew it wouldn't look good to me. Yeah. Uh, not respecting the sharing limit. Some groups had times. Again, it goes back to sponsorship. Not muting phones, texting. Private, have a private conversation in a loving and caring way. Don't just go up to them and say, hey, dude. Man, don't, you, you can't do that in here. You know, just tell them, say, hey, look, this is how we do it in here. You know, respect our friendship. Respect it. What went on? Same thing for that one, right? Add and subtract the meeting formats. Stick, stick to the format. Stick to the format. We don't need to add words. It's already said. It's been said before some of us got here. You know, and it's going to be said after. <laughs> what is that? Respect and fellowship. Which one all? Sorry. Yeah, all of them. Okay. Just basically respect the fellowship. Yes. That's what we can do. Thank you. All right. Give them a hand. My name's Lauren, and I'm an Okay. We have. Going back and forth to the coffee pot, we had come early, stay late. You know, get there, get your coffee, sit down. You can talk after the meeting and get coffee then too. Um, we had texting, put in the announcements, please don't text, as well as mute your phone, because they say please vib put on vibrate or turn off your phone, so just add please don't text, because it is a problem now. E-cigarettes. That's, if it's a non-smoking meeting, it's a non-smoking meeting. Right. So you shouldn't be smoking e-cigarettes either. It's non-smoking, you need to go outside, period. And that just, you could just explain that too. It's no smoking of any kind. Right. Talking and side conversations, place in the format, please don't cross talk. But I mean, it's like what y'all were saying too, it's respect the, respect the meeting facility, respect everybody in the meeting. Um, Oversharing. Auditory? Yeah. I don't know what we put for that. Use a timer. Oh, use a timer. Use a timer. We have groups that use timers, so everybody gets timed. It's not just one person. Oh, well, you speak too long. You get. You got to be quiet now. It's like everybody gets five minutes, and when the timer goes off, you need to wrap it up in a few seconds, and then that's that. And then we had know-it-alls. We don't share. Um, Opinions in NA, period. We share experience, strength, and hope. If I don't have experience in that, I don't really have any way to, any right to be telling you what I think you should be doing because I have no experience and I don't know. Um, 
sharing off topic constantly. I think we put speak to your sponsor. Yeah, just talk to your sponsor. Your sponsor should take you aside and explain to you that some stuff's not for the floor and you can't put everything on the floor all the time. If it's a burning desire, that's one thing. But to just constantly be sharing everything, that's why you have a sponsor. And 13th steppers, um, pretty much what I said was it's the old timer's responsibility to kind of help make sure that. Okay, I'm sitting here talking to him. No, you need to come over here with the women. Sometimes I mean, if the you're going to... Sometimes the are the 13th. <laughs> they are. They are. And it's, that's what I'm saying. It is. It's true. It's true. And so it's also a responsibility, I, I feel, of old-timers to try to help protect you because when you're new, you don't know, and they shouldn't be predators. And I've 13th stuff some people, and I only have two years. And I got 13th step when I got here. So what kind of example are we setting when I'm new and I'm getting 13th step, and then I'm 13th step? It's like a cycle. Like, we need to look out for each other because that's something we need to do for for each other because when you're new you don't know and it's those old habits and you just don't know so that's all we got And I'll give this, I'll give this on 13th step. We didn't have, it wasn't a specific 13th step, but we had an individual who literally, a, a grown adult man, who was the newcomer that cornered my sponsee who was 18. She came to open the meeting. She was there on time. She was early, like we're supposed to be. We meet in a secluded building by itself, and he accosted her. So so we changed, at the time we had a group conscious and we changed the time that you could, we just passed it where nobody would cheer, would open a meeting alone. Mm-hmm. There had to be two people of both sexes there at all times and nobody left anybody there alone. And that helped. So. I'm Alicia and I'm an addict. For cell phone, surfing, texting, etc. Uh, we put include in the meeting format. The please silence and do not use your cell phones during the meeting and empower the home group members and all to lead by example. Um, for side talk while someone's sharing, com- be compassionate um, with the confrontation after the meeting. Also lead by example and don't sit with the people you are inclined yeah. to laugh and talk and talk with. Yeah. 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 Um, you know there's some people you can't sit next to. Mm-hmm. Um, competitive sharing. Uh, share experience with someone after meeting in a loving and caring way. Uh, home group damage control. You know, with the with at the home group when that kind of stuff's going on, basically it'd be better off, better if you have a good group conscience about it and discuss ways to uh, help with that problem. Uh, tell a newcomer if they need something or. Tell a newcomer if something they saw goes against the traditions, the steps, or etc. You know, talk to the newcomer and use the damage control to let them know that's not normally how it is. Um, get coffee and go to the restroom before the meeting. Uh, also, lead by example. Uh, emphasizing religion while sharing. Uh, lead by example. Again, talk to someone after the meeting. Um, if need, discuss a group contents and if an ongoing problem. And so that's all we got to. Talking during readings, greeting and hugging. <laughs> we have um, okay. We don't really know about this. The, a newcomer packet um, with meeting protocol that might kind of step on some um, approved conference literature, but it was just an idea we thought we'd throw out there. Also, uh, get with the person after the meeting and discuss it in a loving way. You know, just kind of get you shut up. Um, Free cell phone use, usage and not silencing. If you're late, uh, be respective, not loud, which is kind of an opinion versus a solution. But we probably, we, during our little um, brainstorming, the uh, responsibility of the uh, sponsor to kind of teach our, um, you know, our sponsees actually what to do uh, aside 
from not using one day at a time. Uh, crosstalk. We have um, add to the meeting for format. Um, several times. Oh, yeah, that several was, That was number three. That was a cell phone thing. Okay. Oh, so we don't have Four is cross Oh, four is cross -talk. Did I skip three? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's on tape forever. Three is cell phone using to not start seeing add to the meeting format. Am I doing this right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, several times. No phones at all during meetings. Good luck with that. Four, crosstalk, sponsorship, talk to your sponsees about protocol, which we're learning right now. Five, Using talk. Drug alerts. Um, two or more home group members talk to the person after the meeting. Meeting format we tried not to mention specific drugs or usage. And that's it. Um, only service animals. And we did. We didn't finish our list. All right. Man. We like to talk. Thank you, Jim W. from the Peace Center. I'm Jeff. I'm an addict. Hey, Jeff. Thank you all for coming out this morning. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the putting together the little skit. And um, I think what this is about is bringing awareness on how I conduct myself in a meeting. And for me, it's more about what I do in my meetings rather than me telling you what you need to do. But I think when this stuff is brought to our attention, we carry a better message. And you think about this, what we're doing here is life-saving stuff. There are people who are coming in here, and you think back about your act of addiction and what life was like and how horrible it was. I think about that and, you know, I want to come to a place that is actually solving my problem. And so there are ways that we can do this effectively. If you, I went ahead and worked all 12 steps. I think that's kind of important. In the 12th step, they talk about having had a spiritual awakening and then carrying this message to the addict who st still suffers. I don't think there's a better place to do that in most cases than a home group or your uh, meetings that you attend. So this is part of my work. This is part of my journey to stay clean and also to pat, you know, light, light the torches for other people and pass it on. This is important stuff. So how to do it. Um, uh, I made the comment in our little group that I thought it was sort of ironic that I'm asked to, to get up here and speak on something that I do frequently in meetings. And, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not proud of it. But um, there are things that I do. I sit next to my buddies. There are two guys that come to mind. I will not sit next to them. Because if I do, I'm going to be disruptive to this group, to our group. Because we cut up the whole time. And I think part of what sharing is about is it's people's energy. They're pouring their heart and their soul into the meetings sometimes. And if I'm over there cutting up, and, you know, it's great for me and it's great for my buddy, but it's disruptive. And it takes away the energy of the person who's speaking, you know. And I see that in meetings Sometimes meetings I go to, um, somebody is speaking and there's disruptive noises that are taking place as they are speaking. It, again, it sucks the energy away from that person's ability to express their thought. They, I don't know about you, but I'm half at ADD all you know all the time. So any little thing that goes on, yeah, you know, I'm like here and there. And so, uh, and if I can stay focused, generally speaking, I'm going to get that message that people are talking about. Not not just that. I feel like um, part of being a good member is paying attention when somebody else is speaking, focusing on what they're saying. Sometimes it's you know it's the stuff that we're complaining about, but other times it's stuff that can help me in my recovery. Also talked about the, you know the, the things about the know-it-alls or you got to comment on every single thing. You know if you've been around a long time, which some of us have been, you have a lot of experience. So you can talk about every single thing that somebody in the meeting has shared because you can draw from your experience, not share your opinions. What I do often when I'm not in defect mode is I, if I'm 
feel like I'm being drawn. Something inside me is pulling me to share because of something. And I can share my experience and it's helpful to the person who may be, you know, going through something. Um, then I do it. And if, if not, I just sit back. And a lot of times what I do is I listen. <laughs> Irony in its purest form. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, yeah. So, those are a few thoughts. Um, I also think you know we have traditions that set into place. Our fifth tradition. We're we're about carrying the message to the addict who still suffers. What is our message? You know that, that an addict. Any addict. Go ahead. Can, can, can lose a desire to use and find a new way to live. Right, and so our the, our objective here is the, the you know find the new way to live. You know, so I think if I'm mindful of that as I'm in a meeting, this is what I'm here for. This isn't the Kiwanis Club. This isn't a you know for a, we could be talking about football or golf or another a dozen different subjects. But we're here. I think the the joke was kind of made about the guy whose cat died. You know, and you know, all all kidding aside, that can be serious to some people. I had a pet die. And it was like, yeah, I wouldn't want people to be cracking on that. But at the same time, every other member doesn't have to share their cat story. You know, it doesn't have to be a meeting about the death of a pet. We need to stay focused. Our focus is about grief. Yeah, yeah, grief. You can yeah, chair you, person. yeah. The chairperson can. But I guess you know what I'm saying more along the lines of is we've got to be mindful of why we are here. We we could talk about what happened at the Super Bowl. You know, but it's not relevant to why we're in, in our Narcotics Anonymous meeting. We're here to learn how to live life without the use of drugs. So I think it's important stuff. Um, I just I drew from this, I, and I, what I what I hope to do is to take this back. You come to these conventions, you get all this knowledge, and you know you've heard the term the enlightened fool. You have this all this knowledge, and you don't do anything with it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this back. And do it in my the groups that I go to, and and um, you know be mindful of this type of stuff when I see it. Um, one of the things that I heard again and again is in the solutions portion is taking a person outside afterward and sharing with a little compassion. Um, I was at one time what they called the NA police, uh, and I did that. And, no offense to anybody who's got two years or so, but that was when I felt I knew everything. I felt like, well, I got two years, I, I got this down. And so it was my duty to correct everyone who spoke incorrectly. If they said sober at a meeting, boy, I'd be on them, you know. So, and, and Rodney pointed about sniper sharing. This, uh, this poor girl was out of a treatment center and she learned what they taught her. And, and I mentioned this in her small group. Ignorance is not stupidity. Ignorance is simply not knowing having information about something. And so this poor girl came in not having the information that most of us have at our meetings. And she shared that she had been sober, clean and sober for such and such. And I made the remark, you know, saying that you're clean and sober is saying like you, you like oranges and fruit. You know, it's really redundant. You don't have to do that, you know. And my sponsor, I thought I was going to get a pat on the back from him. You know, he's Mr. And he said, we don't do that. So what do you mean? He says, you don't call somebody out like that in front of everybody. You take them out outside afterward. And he says, there's a chance you'll never see that girl again. And she was right. I never did see that girl again. Hopefully she went over to AA or wherever she went. But um, the point is, I don't need to do that, to call people out. There's a way to do this. Take a few minutes after a meeting. A guy did that with me. He shared with me, and it was not on a tradition violation thing. It was about, um, you know, for me, it was about not being able to stop the obsessive thoughts about using. An old timer took five minutes of his time with a compassionate heart and talked with me after the meeting. And it, it made all the difference in the world because I stuck around. And I, and I still use to this day what he taught me. I think that's what we can do. Uh, we, the meeting is over at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, whatever it is. The meeting's not over. If you, if you see a still suffering addict and you're working your 12th step, um, go outside, talk with the person, share with the person, get your buddy. Hey, let's do the one-two on this guy, you know, or whatever. Um, that I think is what, Narcotics Anonymous has taught me a lot, but it's really taught me the important thing is to open my heart and to share with people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I got one minute. We still got ten minutes. Sorry. I got more. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna add it. Hey, um, a, a lot of the solutions I heard were one on one, one on one sponsorship, one on one sponsorship. Well, that's been the solution for a long, long time, and the problem is it's still here. Um, one of the things that I haven't heard anybody say is that so many times I attend learning days on service, and there's not enough of those. Um, however, even in this today, just like Jeff said, I learned something I hadn't thought of that I'm doing, and it brings awareness. And most of the times, it's almost like preaching to the choir. Most of the time, the people that need to hear it, if, even if you take them, you've already, if they've already been talked to. They've already been stepped to. We already know that they're 13th stepping. We already know that they won't sit still during the meeting. We, and it's not always the newcomer, halftime, it's the old timer. <clears throat> but sometimes having something like this as learning day, I, I did learn early in recovery, if you feed them, they will come. You know, so make it a party and then have this kind of thing at my home group. And so that way they're kind of being called out from the whole group, but they're really not because nobody ever, it was a generally thing. And at least it brings more awareness. It brings more awareness to the newcomer and it brings more awareness to the perpetrator or to the, you know, people that don't know and the people doing it, not doing it, that, that it's less threatening. And that might work. Um, and a whole bunch of our stuff was about cell phones. And I'll share this. It's not a suggestion. The happiest I ever saw a gentleman who I love and respect. He's my predecessor. I love his ass. And he was losing his mind because of people texting, answering their phone, Facebook, yada, yada, in the meeting. Losing his mind. Like, you know, he's, he wasn't on the verge of using, but he was, he was ready to, like, stop coming to meetings. It was really pissing him off. And, um, and so I sent him a link to a cell phone jammer, and he carries it. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, he's not supposed to have it. It's probably not okay. And, um, but if you walk in that, that circle for 20 yards around that meeting, your cell phone won't work. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that is the, and it costs like 20 bucks, and he is the happiest man on the planet. He's like, la, 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 la. You will not answer your phone or Facebook in his meeting. So, you know. <laughs> That's all I have. I love y'all. <laughs> Anybody else want to say something in here? I'm Jordan. I'm that. That's yours. I need to come down there or you sit right here. You sound loud enough. Sound out. Yeah. I'm Jordan. I'm that. Thank Mainly thing that we need to know is that we have newcomers that come in that room. Uh, the newcomers do not want to know our protocol. They will want to talk, or they may have a phone, um, and they may come in there. And, and you know what we got to do is make sure we don't interrupt the, the, the meeting to down somebody. Because like you said a while ago, that lady never came back to the meeting. We want everybody that needs help to come back to the meeting. You know, all of this is good protocol. The strange thing is, we need to learn to make sure that what we do won't agitate that person coming in here. You will never come back to a meeting. Um, another one we didn't discuss was religion. I said, I said, thing to me. You know, I am a Christian, I'm a religion person, but I do not bring in NA. NA says, what's it say? We are, we are a spiritual program. program. We are not a religion program. Leave it at that. Leave your religion at home. I leave mine at home. When I come into a meeting, I don't go in there and I don't go talking about Bible verses. You know, um, even though when I get home, I might open it. Um, just, just remember, we got rules that we have to go by. Our protocol is, you know, to uh, carry the message to the addict and still suffer. That's the main thing, is to carry the addict message to the addict and still suffer. Not to down, not to crusade them, not to go out there and, and, and you know, talk to him, two or three of us, talk to him in a loving way. He'll learn. When I first come in here, I was like this man right here. Two years I was clean, I knew it all, and I wanted to call out everybody in the meeting when they when they disrupt somebody. You know, but that's wrong. I need to let let the meeting keep going 
at a steady pace, and then after the meeting, two, three of us talked to the person. You know, that's all I got to say. David, David. 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 We got five minutes. They want us to end on time, sir. I want to get everybody to get a chance, so. Okay, thank you all for this. This has been wonderful. And I got, I got convicted a little bit on one of those. Uh, I'm consistently going to meetings late. And really, it's about the same time I get there, just about you know three, four, five minutes after the meeting starts. And, and um, I think it all started really not because I wanted to show off what I walked in, but rather because uh, um, I didn't want to talk to nobody. You know, and real, I'm a social anxiety person. So when you guys were all seated, then I would come in and we wouldn't have to have any conversations. But I see now that that's distracting. And uh, I'm going to work really hard on getting there early. And, uh, and, and so I, I don't do that anymore. But one quickly, I wanted to speak about uh, the phone usage. You know, that is a big one. And uh, for me, it's, it, it, people sit, it's like Rodney and I have a conversation, we'll just talk like this, right? But if I'm texting, I can, you know, laugh and all this other. And I know they're having a conversation. It's the same thing as if you're talking to somebody else, it's no different. And, um, and I'm, I don't bring my phone into a meeting. Now, when I go to a meeting, I just don't bring it in. Uh, but here, volunteer work and service work, and I, I do bring it in. Because this is volunteer work and service work on this dinner workshop, or if I'm doing an area meeting or something. I will bring it in because I have other responsibilities. But um, I wanted to share that part. I also wanted to share that I, not everybody that goes to, like the people who need to hear this message are probably not in this room. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I'm getting some ideas and some how to help others out with this stuff. But um, not, not everybody that goes to a meeting is there for any other reason but to get a paper signed, to get a wife off their back, to get a husband off their back. And they're not really concerned what our protocol is at all, ever. And the fact that they're like me when I first was using, don't tell me anything, I'll do the opposite. You know what I mean? Because I'm all that. <laughs> Thank you all again for a wonderful workshop. Thank you. 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 Real quick, I just want to share this. Still with the religious I, I had an issue with that coming in. I wanted to share my religious belief system. And my sponsor said this, and I've learned to live by it. By it. He said, Rodney, would the God of your understanding want an atheist to get clean? Would he want a Buddhist to be clean? Would he want a Muslim to be clean? He said, if you have to share something about your religious belief system, that's for outside of the meeting. But inside, we all bring our collective God into the meeting and share what he has done for us to experience strength and hope. And that helped me out a lot. All right. One more back here. I'm not, I'm not asking. What is, I, I, I need to bring this up because it's been driving me crazy. And I know I should have called my sponsor or my have a, But um, you just go to my meeting. It's making me, I don't want to go to my own group because of, uh, that same person is just a nagging and nagging and, and, and bringing me down because I got two years, which he's probably doing everybody like that in there, and it's just driving me crazy, you know, and it's making me feel, and it's making it be harder to do my recovery, you know, and it's kind of pulling me back a little bit. That's why you go to my meeting, so, you know, and, uh, and because I felt like, you know, we were to take him back, you know, felt like he was taking me. Anyway, I was talking about that. I was just on my mind, you know. All right, give me. I really want this, and I got to drop my brakes in my head. I don't know, to work hard in the 30 bus. I met my sponsor and everything. And you know, she came on sponsor and everything. And she brought me this network, this truck. I love the way in my life. I showed a lot of love. I yeah. I don't know fall back. I don't need nothing to fall back. I don't give a damn. It takes me all day to talk about it. But that's not where I share it. Y'all should have done it with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll circle.
the left right here at the front of the room and close the meeting. Thanks everybody who participated. Ooh. He's got he's right there.